Hi, I'm here with Don Ernst, a farmer's insurance agent in Leewood, Kansas. Hi, Don. Hello, Michelle. Could you tell us a little bit about homeowner's insurance today? Okay. Um, who needs, does, is it required? It's required when you have a loan. Otherwise, yeah. it's not necessarily required. You don't have to insure your home. No. Uh, <laughs> but if you have a loan, uh, you have to because the mortgage company is going to require that you have a homeowner policy because uh, at least in the amount to cover their interest in the property. So, but and, but so that's so when you buy a house, it's one of the line items on your closing statement that there's going to be insurance if there's a mortgage on the house. Right. Generally, uh, uh, like you said, it's a line item in your closing costs, and in that line item item for a mortgage company is called hazard insurance. Uh, that's what the homeowner policy is, and so uh, they will collect. You're going to pay all your closing costs at once. Part of that is the home, the first year of the homeowner policy. And so it's all paid up the first year. They pay the insurance company. It's all done. But then it becomes part of your house payment after that. So your house payment is made up of principal and interest insurance and taxes. And so starting with the very first house payment, uh, part of that's for insurance. And they collect it for a year. So at the end of the year, uh, when we send out the renewal notice, we don't send it to the insured, we send it to the mortgage company, and they've been saving it up for a year. They send us a check, and then it just perpetuates from there. And what um, what is covered by a homeowner's policy? Um, all the normal perils that you would think about, fire, lightning, windstorm, hail, explosion, vandalism, malicious mischief, damage by aircraft, damage by vehicles. Uh, but generally, if you think in terms of sudden and accidental, it's probably covered. Uh, if it sounds like maintenance, it probably isn't covered. Ooh, and could you give an example of what would be maintenance? Um, under a toilet, there's a wax ring, and sometimes those will wear out over time, and it starts to leak gradually. And it may go a year or so without you noticing it, and then all of a sudden the entire subfloor is rotted out, and uh, that is a maintenance problem that's not covered. Um, one of the quirky things about it, if you have a pipe behind a wall break and it does a lot of water damage, all of that water damage is covered, fixing the walls covered, fixing the pipe is not. <laughs> just that the maintenance part of the maintenance is not covered. Okay, so, so sudden, and ac sudden and accidental and theft. Uh, theft is covered. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. and then are there different components? I, here we're kind of talking about the structure itself, but then we have stuff inside. Is that a separate policy, or is that included in the homeowner's policy? Yeah, most policies they'll uh, have an amount of coverage on the dwelling. Uh, they'll there'll be an allowance for coverage for other structures. Um, these policies were developed when everybody's garage was in their backyard. Oh. Okay, so there's coverage for separate structures. Whether you have one or not, it's part of the package. Uh, so if you had a separate garage or a tool shed, uh, something along those lines, that's covered. Uh, then you'll have coverage for your contents or personal property. Um, a lot of times we'll, we'll back up the dwelling. Uh, we'll base the amount of coverage uh, on the estimated reconstruction cost of the home. Uh, so if we estimate it at $250,000, uh, that's what we would base the amount of coverage on. And then uh, the policy includes an endorsement called extended replacement cost, where we'll guarantee the replacement of the home up to 125% of the insured value, just in case of, um, well, for instance, the Joplin tornado. Um, if we had a uh, tornado that big take out half of Johnson County, and originally we insured your home for 250000 now that's not going to be enough because there's going to be a shortage of materials and a shortage of labor, and so it may cost more than that at, at, in the event of a big catastrophe. Um, and then on the contents, they're generally figured on a contents replacement value uh, or no depreciation. Okay, meaning meaning if I have um, uh, something, uh, I don't know, I have a Fabergé egg. Well, that might not be a good example, but I have a <laughs> I have a nice dining room table, but I bought it 20 years ago, um, so. I, it's not going to depreciate the value. I'll get a new dining room table. Buy a brand new one of like kind and quality. Okay. Um, usually a, a dining room table, that may not be a good example. They don't usually right. depreciate, but a couch or a recliner, uh, those types of things do depreciate. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, then am I required to actually replace it? Do you just give me the cash and I decide whether I want to replace it? On the personal property, they will 
uh, pay you the actual cash value or basically the depreciated value up front. Of then, what it was at the time at the, it was lost. Yeah, so okay. if you lost a 10-year-old couch, they're going to pay you for a 10-year-old couch. Okay. And then as you actually replace those items, they will make up the difference up to the replacement cost. Okay, so then if you do it, then you actually will get a replacement. Full replacement. Okay, mm -hmm. okay great. And then um, is the insurance, um, adjust, you said 125% for the replacement. Um, is there an add add on each year as as costs go up for the insurance? Well, um, generally we'll have all the features of the home in the system: the square footage, type of roof, type of siding, wall coverings, floor coverings, number of bathrooms, whether there's a fireplace, deck. But a lot of the features of the home are in the system. So every year when the policy comes up for renewal, they run it through the formula and says, "Okay, last year it was insured at two hundred and fifty thousand, but this year it's going to take two hundred and sixty-five thousand to replace it." So they will bump the coverage up every year to keep up with the inflating reconstruction costs. And then does the premium adjust also? Yes. Okay, and then so if that's being paid through your mortgage company does the homeowner still get a copy of the notice so they'll know about it? Yeah, that we send the renewal notice out to the insured and to the mortgage company. Okay, great. And then um, what about the personal property? If, if um, is there any time when the personal property, if you take it out of the house, what if, you know, I've got my golf clubs and I'm playing golf or something, is it still covered uh, <clears throat> if something happens? Yeah, say under your homeowner policy, if your contents were covered up to 150000 uh, you have 10% of that away from the premises, uh, so you would have $15,000 for the coverage away from your home worldwide. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so even if I was traveling? If you're in Europe and you uh, have your luggage stolen, uh, you'd be covered up to 10% of whatever the amount of contents coverage you have. Okay, so is 10% is what you use or is that a industry standard? No, it's pretty standard. Okay, yeah. now that brings me to the next question which is how do I determine is there an automatic amount of coverage for the personal property or do I have to give a list of every single thing I have? Um, once we establish the coverage on the, the dwelling uh, then generally the contents would be insured to an amount equal to 75% of what's on the okay. dwelling. And then if I needed something, if I had something more valuable, would I add on coverage? Yeah, well, uh, where, where you're going with that is uh, maybe a rider on your policy. That's, that's right, that's okay. right. Okay, and so there are certain items that we consider target items, jewelry, watches, furs, guns, silverware, things a burglar is looking for when he comes in. Okay. High value, easy to carry out. Okay, so all of your contents including the target items are covered for all the normal perils fire okay. lightning windstorm hail um, so if you had a five thousand dollar ring and it burned up in a fire not a problem it's part of the contents coverage okay however target items are limited on the peril of theft oh so just just if just when it's a theft the limits okay. apply to theft okay. or mysterious disappearance so <laughs> they walked away yeah <laughs> What is a mysterious disappearance? Uh, the ghost got it. Uh, okay. um, if you lost the stone out of your ring and you, oh, I see. And you just I have see. no idea what happened, where okay. it is, um, you washed your hands in a public restroom and you come back and the ring's gone. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so, uh, but let's say now somebody um, stole that $5,000 ring. Under the basic contents coverage, theft of jewelry is limited to 1500 per article, no more than 5000 for the total loss okay. for more Ooh. than one item. Ooh. And so if you had a $7,000 ring, <clears throat> then what you would do is we would put it on what's called a scheduled personal article floater, uh, where you would name a specific piece for a specific, specific value, okay. and we arrive at that value uh, based on a current appraisal. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. And then that's covered for any peril. Then, yeah, then the coverage becomes all risk. Lose it, drop it, break it, step on it, whatever, it's covered. And uh, generally no deductible on the floaters. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then do, are those renewable every year also? That's part of the homeowner package. Okay, so it would just be added on. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really helpful. Thank you very much, Don. Thank you, Michelle.